Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Vitamin B Show, where we interview people that have made millions of dollars or built a tribe of millions of people on social media. We get down to the nitty gritty details of exactly how they did it so you can mimic their success and create massive results in your own life. Guys, today we have a very special guest, which I'm super excited about, a dear friend of mine who is the founder of Circle Plus Payment. He is a producer where his docu-series are going to be released on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and countless other different stations. He's a real estate investor, an author, an entrepreneur, and a partner of a fabulous solar company. He's been featured on Business Insider, Fox, CNN, US Weekly, and several other outlets. He's also made millions of dollars throughout his life, and he is going to be sharing his secrets with us today. So make sure you guys stick around and absorb all of this greatness, because I know there is something inside of you that wants more out of your life, that wants to be more successful, that wants to have better results, and that wants to leave a massive legacy. And how you do it is from studying from people that have done it. So welcome to the show. I'm super happy to have you. How are you doing? And what can you share with us? And let's get this party started. Let's kick it off and off to you, my friend. Oh, thank you so much, Brittany. I mean, how do I top your energy here? I mean, I think that's like the first thing to be successful is the energy that you have. You hyped it up so much. Now I feel kind of guilty even being on. I don't have that kind of No, energy. we're so happy to have you. Um, would you mind sharing with us how can somebody get started? Like if somebody wants to make a million dollars and they're starting from, you know, having like 10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars in their bank account, what can they do today to get started on building well? That's a good question. You know, I, I find that really fascinating because to me, I'm not one of those people that, you know, started out with just, you know, having money from my family or parents or something. So I had to figure it out on my own. And, you know, if you're just starting out as cliche and funny as it sounds, you kind of have to build your mindset first to have that mindset and a really strong why, because otherwise you're just never going to commit to things and make decisions, right? Because I remember this old saying, like Tony Robbins says, I think it's like decisions, not conditions, like determine your destiny. And it's like, you got to be able to make the right decisions. And you're not going to be able to do that if you live in this place of fear. And so I think the first step is just cultivating that mindset and just reading and surrounding yourself with good people. And now you can kind of do that with the internet because you can kind of network with anybody in the world. It's like the biggest life hack, right? You can, no matter where you are in the world, if you have a smartphone or a computer, you have the tools to reach out to any millionaire, billionaire, and, and just get free mentorship and advice. And you can kind of steal the best ideas in the world. So I think it starts with that strong mindset because, you know, there's like an old saying, like if, you, if all you had was a hammer, could you build a house? And, you know, it's like people say hard work is the only thing, right? So I don't ever say like, you know, hard work alone will make you rich or wealthy because, you know, it's just like hard work is just like having only a hammer in your toolkit. And if, if that was the case, you know, people that are like farmers in India would be the richest people because they're the hardest working people, right? So it takes a lot more than that because you got to have the right vehicle. And when I mean vehicle, the right things to put your money into, the right, right people in your life and all these things kind of culminate to, to bringing that. Out from you. I love that. So powerful and so true. And it got me thinking, why are some people successful and some people are not? What, what do you think that is? I think, you know, that's such a great question because like I was saying earlier, you know, it's like, I think most people, hard work doesn't account for more than 20 to 30% of your success, right? Because a lot of people work really hard for their bosses but can you say they're successful financially? No, because they've made their company a lot of money or their boss a lot of money. Um, but I think it's always a lot about having a great idea, a strategic plan, and the right story in your mindset. And you have to have like a deeper purpose. And, um, you know, there's like this whole thing about like, you know, we're all equal kind of spiritually in the spiritual realm, but, but we're not equal in the marketplace. And that really comes from upgrading yourself. And having skill sets that that's valuable because that's the only way you're going to build true wealth is if you know what to do, right? Because I mean, if you put the same, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, the same, you know, eight to 12 hours a day to work. But if you ask yourself this question, okay, 
you let's say you make ten thousand dollars a month right now or five thousand dollars a month and you go could i make 10 times more money in a year 100 times more money in a year well you look at other people that have done it and are doing it and you can say yeah for this they have the same time as you and they're making way more money so obviously they're doing something different they're working in a different field or they're making more money I, for instance like i go to this thing with uh with, with my family right um a lot of my cousins that like live in india for instance if they go get a job in india in the marketplace they can have the same skills as somebody in the u.s and sometimes they might only make a thousand dollars a month working in building apps or something right having such a high value skill set and that's because if that market is so saturated and that's what you're worth in that market but the same person that's in the u.s and canada and europe might make 10 times the amount of money doing the same exact job. So a lot of it has to do with being aware of, as weird as it sounds, your location in life, who you work for, like what, what type of value you have and where you are in the world in, in a way that makes sense. I love it. And so how do people release that potential? Like we're talking about being able to build wealth based on your skill set. How do people really capitalize on their skill sets? What do they need to do to be able to cultivate that th those skill sets? Well, I think first is figure out what you want to do, right? Because otherwise you're never gonna follow through fully. Um, so if you realize, like, what do you really want in life? Is it more freedom? Do you just want more time to spend with your family, your kids, build a family? Do you just, um, you know, what are you really going for? And so unless you have a strong enough why, you're not gonna really be able to follow through with that and I think the skill set that you really need is is figuring out okay if, if your end goal is okay you look at the outcome of I want just more money in my life and freedom and I want and you make a hard number to it say I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month well you got to figure out what type of skills what type of job what type of business what type of vehicle can I create that will give me that type of an outcome in life right so unless you have a target to reach to there's no way you're going to be able to do it because for instance in, in real estate right when I make my first million dollars in, in a real estate flip the first thing I realized is, well, it's the same amount of work if I did it somewhere else, but maybe I would have made only 50000 or or $100,000, right? And I have friends that did the same type of deal, same type of capital, and they might make a hundred, two hundred k but it's completely about the vehicle that I invested in, like my location, just having more insight and knowledge and having a better strategy, right? So a lot of that comes into place, and it's the same thing that's kind of a metaphor for life. Like, you know, you can do the same, like two people can create the same amount of technology or, or, or product, but one will sell way more because their marketing is better, their, their, their uh, strategy for distribution is better. So it's, it's having a lot of things in place, you know? So it's, it's, you know, life is not always fair and you gotta find your unfair advantage in the world. And so really that comes down to finding your gift. You know, it's, it's don't even look outward, look inward and say, okay, what's my gift? What do I have that I can serve and do so much more better than other people in life? And because I think we live in a world today that's so selfish that we're taught everybody can win. Everybody's great. And it comes from like self-actualization and realizing, unfortunately, this is not true, right? Because I meet some of the best entrepreneurs in LA. I've met some of the coolest celebrities, business people. And I always wonder like, okay, what do these outliers have that are way better than the rest of us? Like, how do some people achieve a thousand times more productivity in their life than the rest of us that work so hard? Like, you know, like what is that secret? And I think it comes down to just, you know, having like, you, you've got to really look inward and go, okay, what's my gift in my life? What do I do way better? How do I serve my clients better? How do I provide a product that's way better? And then get the word out there because, you know, there's no easy way around it, right? I love that you said it. There's no easy way around it. And that's totally true. It takes grit and perseverance and passion and to work smart, not just, I mean, obviously hard work is so much of the equation, but it's working smart. It's the productivity, it's the strategy behind right. your actions and your time. And you mentioned vehicles and that, that resonated with me because yeah. I really think that your level of success is, is uh, I, 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 so many people say, you know, follow your, follow your heart and, and, and whatnot. But I also think it also has to do with what type of vehicle Absolutely. are you spending your time in? And so what do you think are the most profitable vehicles or sectors to be investing your time into and learning about that can make you um, that, that generational wealth and, and build your legacy? 
Absolutely. Well, first of all, I was going to say before we say that, like, you know how easy it is to make $1 million? You can invest $10,000 for 60 years, I think like, like 8% interest or something. And then your $10,000 investment will grow to $1 million, $12,000. So anybody with $10,000, you know, can find an 8% interest type of vehicle and make that in 60 years. But it's not about getting rich, you know, over a period of time. It's about getting rich quicker, right? Not get rich quick, but just get rich quick in five, 10 years. I think that's what most people aim for, right? So I guess it starts with, like you said, the vehicle is so important because, you know, anybody that works 200 years, even at a minimum wage job, will eventually become a millionaire if you just start saving money, right? So there's no point in that because you don't care about making money 200 years from now. So the vehicle, first and foremost, is always is the most important thing. And it's like most millionaires, I think they, there's like some statistic that like most of the millionaires in America, I think, are through real estate or something like that. So people always look for that. I mean, that's that's an easy one. But, you know, a lot of people always um, underestimate the value of kind of like the stock market index funds and certain certain things that, you know, you can actually retire. I think if you make the right prudent investments, um, you know, it's like people that like take a large portion of their income. The first thing is finding a high value skill set, right? So something that like, let's say you don't want to be an entrepreneur and this is something everybody can do, right? Even if you have a job, just figuring out how to be more valuable in the marketplace and upskilling yourself. Like if you're working for like a tech company, you know, figure out what the highest paying position is that gives you the most time that you need and flexibility and just kind of optimize your life because First and foremost, a lot of people aim, um, I know this kind of roundabout way to answer this, but a lot of people aim to just make a lot of money. But if that's all you're optimizing for, that's not really a good life because they become a slave to money as opposed to making money their slave. And I also like, you know, having a goal of just saying, I want to make $10 million isn't a good goal in itself. Because why do you want to make $10 million is what I ask myself. If you don't have that strong enough why or a purpose for it, like, you know, I want to provide for my family. I want to do this, this, and this. I want to help a million people and donate a million meals or, or give water in India to people. Like if you don't have that strong enough purpose, there's no point in making that money because money on its own is completely useless unless it's spent. Right. And you also, once you make money, you got to figure out how to make more money to constantly be able to give it away or do something useful with it. Otherwise you're no different than a guy that's poor and doesn't spend any money. Cause you know, it's, you got to have a strong enough purpose to make that money. Now, now that you have that strong enough, why you got to figure out, okay, what's the vehicle that will get me from the quickest way to point A to point B. So like, you know, let's say you, you want to go to the grocery store that's 30 miles from your house. If you drive straight, it'll take you 30 minutes to reach there. Or you can drive all around the world, fly around the world, and you'll still hit the same destination going the exact opposite direction. You get the same result, but one is going the long and hard way and it's probably more expensive. And the best analogy of that is, you know, your time. Because a lot of people right now are just completely in the wrong vehicle. They're just stuck in a job that they hate. They don't have enough time. And they've de-optimized their life for everything. They're trading their time for money. They're not spending time with their family. It's like they've done everything wrong. So if you just do certain things wrong and start optimizing one thing at a time in your life, your health, your wealth, finding love, happiness, all these things, that's what, that's what it's about. So, 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 I mean, the goal in life isn't necessarily just to go make a million dollars, 10 million, a hundred million dollars to figure out what your purpose is in life. And once you have that and you realize, look, okay, I need to, let's say like, I want to make a lot of movies in my life. I want to contribute a lot. I want to help invest in a lot of businesses, then I have a purpose like stronger than myself, right? Where I'm like, okay, now I want to make this money for a reason. And then I'm going to figure out the strategy. So one way or the other. So it's like, it'll come to you and you'll start asking the right questions, but it starts with, with having that, that GPS to like, where do I want to go in my life? And why do I want to get there? Right? Because you'll figure it out one way or the other. If, if, if somebody came to you today and said, Hey, you know, Brittany, like, you know, um, you know, or if you had a family member that absolutely said, like, you know, they would die if you don't get a million dollars to save their life, you will figure out the way one way or the other, because you have a strong enough why, right? And so you'll start thinking about ways, you'll start networking people, you'll start begging, you'll steal, you'll do whatever it takes to get to your end result. And so if you don't have that why, you're never going to achieve your target, right? I love that. Taking notes. That was so impactful, you guys. Feel free to rewind that and listen to it again. I love that you talked about profitable sectors being real estate and the stock market because I love watching YouTube every single night these days. And I love studying the Warren Buffetts and the Elon Musks. And I just study billionaires. I go into YouTube and I type in um, billionaires. I, I go onto Google and I type in 
world's wealthiest people. And then I literally go and look up their names on YouTube and see, I look at the titles and I see, what do I want to learn about today? And a lot of the stuff that I've been learning about is real estate development and, and stocks. I've been really deep diving with Warren Buffett and all of his um, you know, predictions and, and how he's created wealth, what he's investing in, how he decides if a company is profitable. Um, and I am learning so much. And it's something that I just think is so important for every single person. Like if you're listening to this podcast, you have the capacity to go onto YouTube. It's a free platform. You can download it from the app store, just like you downloaded this app to listen to the podcast. And you have the capacity to study billionaires and how they did it. I used to think this stuff was like, kind of like, oh, why are you even like wasting your time d d doing this stuff? You should be out there grinding and hustling. And what I really realized is that's really how it's done. It's totally. by studying success. It's by studying people that have done it and creating a similar roadmap in your own life. You know, you know it, 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 that's what it's about. Absolutely. You know, um, Brittany, as you're, you're talking about that, I find it fascinating, right? Because we live in a time, probably the greatest time in human history where I go to people, you know, if you're one of those people that likes to gamify life or like you like to get the cheat codes in video games, if you start thinking about your life like that, you can basically be like, how do I cheat in life to get ahead? And the best way to cheat in life to get ahead or use like a cheat code if you're like a gamer is study and model all these billionaires and now you can do it for free like 100 years ago you couldn't do that now you have the internet and sometimes you can even like contact these people and go mentor you because a lot of these like billionaire types and not just the warren buffett or bill gates or jeff bezos there's so many more millionaires and billionaires out there that are doing cool stuff that people are just so afraid to just reach out and they'll be like oh maybe they won't have lunch with me. i had literally um dinner with two billionaires last week um, you know, and I didn't even tell anybody about that. It's like, you know, it's because I reach out and I just pick their brain. I get to like learn from them just one-on-one -on -one. and you, you'll realize these people are pretty humble people because they've got a certain level of success. So they have a lot of time in their life. And so their way of giving back is sometimes just if you're a cool guy or, or girl or person and you just genuinely want to learn. And, and in a way, when you start kind of being a fan to them, they get a lot of gratitude to that because it's like they're giving back to you. And it's like, you can basically pick all these smart people's brains for free and it's like you're basically getting the best business school education in real life and it's like a lot of people just are in that mindset of fear that like i'm not good enough or they have this story in their head we all have these stories and limiting beliefs and if you overcome that and just you know sometimes the ignorance is like your best um gift in life because you'll be so fearless and you'll just ask for things and just being direct and asking and, and that's a form of humility in a way and, and people get like refreshed by that because when you come in with a genuine thing of I don't want anything like never go to a billionaire or a millionaire and just ask them for money just ask them for life advice or how they did it or, or or their story and and I guarantee you they themselves will eventually figure out your passion and help you succeed in life they'll give you the right connection the tool and they might even give you money right I've been lucky in that way where me just being myself and showing passion has sometimes paid off that way where they just give me hey I have this friend that can help you out with this and maybe they'll finance your business or they'll they'll Worst case, you'll just have a great time, you know, hanging out with them and learning from somebody, you know? <laughs> I love that. I love it so much. And like, we're talking about how to build wealth and, and that's it. You know, who do you surround yourself by? You become like the people you surround yourself by. And I go through seasons in my life where I went through one point in my life where my business was automated. I really hit my financial goals. I was making more money than I've ever made in my life. And I was just, I, I, I took a little bit of a break. I, I, I really, and I needed it. I, 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 I needed it. And what I noticed is I started surrounding myself by different people. And I started getting a little bit relaxed. My conversations got a little unfocused. And what I learned from that point in my life was the conversations that you have are going to sculpt the level of expertise the, the standard you hold yourself to and the goals that you aspire to master in your life. When you are having intelligent conversations like these, when you are coercing and, and, and creating conversations and, 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 and connecting with people that are doing big things and intelligent and 
making big moves in the world, guess what? You are going to have to level up to hold these people in your life. Successful people like to be surrounded by other successful people. So the quality of who you are today is going to determine the type of people that you are going to attract and keep in your life. And that is why you want to be working on yourself. That is why you want to be focused on becoming the best version of yourself. You can't get lazy. You can't relax. you got to keep becoming that version of yourself that is going to attract and keep successful, high-level people in your life. Because guess what? When you do, you are going to absorb that agreement. You guys are going to build together. You are going to climb together. You guys are going to move mountains together. And you don't build an empire alone. You know, I was interviewing Elena Cardone and I was reposting one of her clips on my Instagram. And she was talking about how you can't know, nobody in the history of the world has ever built an empire alone. And you've got to do it with people. So I love what you were saying. And, and I want to ask you, how do you build a network? I know that you have lots of friends that are millionaires, billionaires, and movie stars. How do you build that network? How can somebody add value to these people's lives or be considered to, to build that, that network of, of people that are changing the world? Absolutely. Well, that's a great question. Um, first of all, I'll give you the background is I grew up in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and there's a population of 10,000 people and the average like wage there is about 35 to 45,000 a year. And I was not surrounded by anybody that was like a millionaire when I grew up. Right. So I didn't know anybody that, that had that kind of money in, in my life. So I basically started at nothing. And to me, it's like now in the old days, it might've been a little bit harder, but now we have the internet. It's like the biggest cheat sheet ever. And so you can basically go in and find who your heroes are. And I guarantee if you go on Facebook or Instagram, as easy and funny as that sounds or on Twitter, if you start DMing people and, and, and just ask better questions or, or figure out a way to add more value, everybody can add value to somebody. And I'll tell you why. Like the reason like some of the biggest life coaches, um, you know, money managers, all these people, they, who are their clients? It's all these wealthy people. Right. And why do these people work with them? Because they add some sort of value to their life. Everybody can add value to somebody's life. And in fact, it's easier to add value to a billionaire than it is to like a completely poor person on the street. And I'll tell you why. For instance, if you came to me and I said, um, how would you Natish add value to like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk? Like what the hell could you possibly do that would help them in their life? I said, I could make Jeff Bezos a billion dollars next year easily. Was that not a little bit valuable to him? How could I do that? Because I have right vehicles. I can tell him these are investments that you can make that are safe in real estate, this, this, and this. I have a building that you want. I have a house that you want that I find. And because I know he has the capital, I can find the thing. And because I'm working with somebody, you can basically figure out the how to do it where it's like, hey, if he goes, I need to buy another building, a warehouse. I need to buy this. I need to buy a house that I can buy for $100 million and sell for $200 million. I guarantee you if I go in and I ask everybody in LA, I can find that form. But everybody has the skill within them and it's free within all of us to add more value to anybody's life. Because it's not a lack of like resources that stop us. It's a lack of resourcefulness. So it's like if somebody came to you, Brittany, and they go, hey, I'm, I want to uh, build a building here. And I will pay you $100 million. Can you put this building up for me? Well, you'd be like, you have $100 million to work with. I guarantee you can go and find the people and you can figure out the plan, build the building and figure out a way to build that building for $70 million and pocket $30 million in your pocket. I guarantee you could do it if I gave you the money. We all have the skill set within us to add massive value. We just don't think of ourselves that we're worthy of it. And so we're afraid to ask. And so that that shows in the way that you act around yourself because we don't think rich people thoughts. Most of us think like peasants, right? So if you think like a peasant, that's where you end up. So you got to create a compelling future in your life and create a completely different story where you basically go, you got to make yourself entitled. I know it sounds weird, not entitled as in like, I deserve things from from other people, but entitled where it's like, I deserve a good quality of life. I deserve happiness. I deserve massive wealth. I deserve all these things. And you got to completely believe with every fiber in your body, because when you talk to people, you have to affirm that and have that level of confidence that I can add massive value, that I'm worth it. And people will see that. That's the only difference between really successful people and us. I've seen that when I'm sitting in a business meeting and I've sat with, you know, really successful people, these people are almost like sociopaths, like in, in terms of how much they believe in themselves, like they're completely convicted with their story, or even if they had nothing, they believe in themselves so much that everybody else does too, right? And so most of us are just afraid because, you know, we think we're doing somebody a disservice and you got to really sh- shift that story in your mind to I'm adding value to people's life like these people like 
like you got to start thinking of yourself and your business as a gift to the world. Like when we, when we start our solar company, right. The way we went from like, you know, zero to 15 minutes, because we have this little saying, it's like, we tell all the salespeople, Hey, your business is your gift. If you're not making a lot of money every single day, you're being extremely selfish because it means you're not helping enough people save money on their power bills or something, you know, corny like that. But it's true. Like, you know, if, if you don't feel like you're adding value in the world and you don't believe in your business, first and foremost, nobody else will. Yeah. I love that. So powerful. One thing that you said that I loved is you're talking about building that confidence. And that's really what I think it's about when you want to, you know, build the network is, is having that confidence and also pay, putting in the time. Like, for example, one of the reasons why I love this podcast is because I want to inspire people. I want to help people. I want to genuinely be able to leave this world a better place. And also because I love connecting with successful people. That's why this podcast is all about interviewing people with millions of dollars or millions of followers, people that have built success or that have built a massive tribe. And so that that's strategic alone, you guys. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because it just takes one idea. Maybe you can do what I used to do for people that were super successful is I used to help them with their social media for free. So I would leverage my superpowers for these people. I mean, like, hey, do you want to help for free? The other thing I used to do is hold events and have them as speakers, highlight them, allow them to promote their products and services and get them clients. That's another thing that I did. The other thing is creating groups on Instagram and on WhatsApp, connecting really, really, really successful people. I mean, like, hey, I have a VIP, you know, mastermind of some of the most influential people in North America and in this space. Do you want to be involved? It's free. And so what I think that's really about is also um, what I think it's really about is also uh, figuring out wh- how can you add value to these people so that you can then be in their sphere of influence. Okay. Ask yourself, how can I add value to the most successful people I know to be welcomed into their sphere of influence, whether that be your superpowers, whether that be you doing stuff for them for free, being their assistant, getting them leads, getting them clients, connecting them with people, giving them a platform. What is it that you can do to put in some elbow grease instead of watching Netflix and chilling? You are focusing on building a network of highly successful people that will push you and level you up and and what what you said that I really liked was you talked about having that confidence how does somebody build that confidence how does somebody you know go um and 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 go out there and move mountains and have the power so deep inside their soul that they can go out there and show up powerfully with out being apologetic, unapologetically stepping into their power to do this. And I think um, you were on mute, Uh, just a little bit of background noise. If you wanted to unmute, I would love to hear what can people do to build that confidence? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I I was thinking about confidence as I have my own saying behind I learned from a friend called calculated confidence. And what that basically means is if something like I was saying earlier, if somebody comes to you, and says, hey, can you do this job for me? Most of us will just say, no, I can't because uh, I, I, I don't think I can. I don't have the skill sets or something. But calculate confidence is saying, yeah, I could probably figure it out, you know, because if you're going to pay me like a million dollars to do this job, I'm sure I can be a little resourceful and pay other people or delegate and figure out how to deliver for you. So it's having that confidence that I can actually do the job and just saying yes to it. And then once you say yes to it, now you're forced into it because it's kind of like, you know how they say it's like if you want to take the island, you know, burn the boats or whatever, and then, you know, you don't look back. It's, it's kind of like you just say yes to every good opportunity in life. And then just having the confidence that, hey, I probably can do this or I can figure it out because there is no plan B. So make your plan B your plan A. And then it will give you the confidence because it becomes instead of a maybe, it becomes a must. And then you become really confident because you don't have any other option. So the best thing you can do is just put yourself into that situation where, you absolutely have to do it. And you, you, then you become convicted to it because 
that's the first thing. But the other thing is, is most of us stay stuck in our own head and start doubting ourselves. And that's the most dangerous place you can be in. Once you make it about other people and you're like, okay, I have to do this to help them because I don't care about myself, whether it works out, but I have to try and be successful because that person relies on me. So it's whether it's my family or, or your client or something, it's like, then you're working from a place of a completely different mindset where, you know, it's, it's, you absolutely will figure it out. And the confidence will come because you won't be stuck in your head anymore. It's like, if you're doing public speaking, right? A lot of, you know how you can be a better public speaker is most of us go up on stage. And the reason they get afraid of public speaking is because we're in our head. What if they say this about me? What if, you know, what if he looks at me bad? What if they don't like what I have to say? But instead, if you make it instead, of, that's a selfish way. But if you make it about, oh, my God, I absolutely have to give this message out. And these people rely on me. And if I don't tell all these people all these secrets and what I have to say in my mind and answer these questions, it's going to be really bad. Like, then you take yourself out of your head and you're serving them. So once you make it about service, your confidence comes. And it's the same mindset you have in business and sales, whatever you do, right, for networking. You, you, it becomes about other people. Like, what if you change the conversation in your head to, I have to network with all these people to learn the secrets, to give it away to other people and I serve and help all these people, my clients, my customers, you know, people that follow me, my friends, my family, you will build that confidence. So powerful and so true. And as we kind of wrap up a little bit, I'm just wondering, and thank you so much. This was so powerful. So many gems have been dropped and I really, hope that the people really embody the words that are being spoken here today, because this is a roadmap for your success. This is a roadmap where you can literally go back and take notes. And this is what I want to challenge every single person to do. I want to challenge every single person that can hear my voice to take notes on what you can apply and how you can take action in your own life to level up. If you want to succeed every single day, you have to get better. That's, you don't want to be that person that looks back on their life and, and, and is like, you know, I, I, I loved, I was in my glory days in high school. I was crushing it. Or I, I made a lot of money in my late 20s. Or I, I really made it in my early 30s and plateau. You don't want that. There's too many people that were on the verge of greatness that plateaued and disappeared from their greatest potential. And that is not you. That doesn't need to be you. And how you do that is consistently leveling up. It's consistently surrounding yourself by great people and great ideas and pushing yourself that next level in every area of your life how you do anything is how you do everything don't let that be you push yourself rise to the occasion hit your next target hit your goals and always be giving your best so you never plateau and you reach the stars and so I want to ask you what can people do to always be leveling up what can people do to be like, what are some actions? Somebody is listening. That's like, oh, I want more for my life. I want to succeed. What can they do to really be stepping into their power to create their dream life and leave their legacy? Absolutely. Well, before I answer that question, I'll give everybody an exercise we can all do, right? So here's a simple thing you can do. Close your eyes for a minute and imagine you're 84, 85 years old. Okay, or 100 years old and look and then now think back to all the things you've done in your life. And then if you in that place and it's not good and you feel like you have a lot of regrets, is that a good place to be in? So I always think to myself every day, like, you know, is the decision I make today going to affect me when I'm like 85 years old? Will I have regrets? And if you're minimizing all the regrets in your life you're going to have a much better outcome because you're going to try more things. You're going to fail a lot more, but you're going to be much happier because you tried those things. So, um, sorry, what was your first question again? Oh, just how can people level up? What are the yeah. actions that people can take um, to, to reach that next level? Right. So the reason I gave that exercise is to level up. You have to kind of look to the future and realize, okay, how do I 
minimize all these regrets that I'm going to have. So once you have the right mindset, that's the first step to leveling up. The second thing is looking at your inner superpowers, right? And this is one of the most powerful things um, you can do. And that's why I wrote my book, How to Manifest Anything, where I talk to all these entrepreneurs and super, super successful people and figure out what the real secrets are. And a lot of it is to level up. You got to look at the superpowers that you have, because these are the most powerful things that we all have within us. And everything good and everything great around you came from these superpowers, which are imagination, curiosity, creativity, and our dreams, right? And, you know, if you think about it, if you look around the room around you, everything good, everything great, the car that you drive, the house that you built, it was once an idea in somebody's head. And that is the most important asset that you have in your life. And once you start thinking about these assets, you'll live in a place of gratitude and you'll realize these things are important because somebody no better than you built the car that you drive, built the, the TV that you use, the computer, the phone. These are all just ideas. And these ideas basically become manifest into real things. And, and these are the things that have created the biggest billion dollar businesses are just ideas. You know, people get paid for their ideas and execution. They don't get paid for working hard, as weird as that sounds. And so to level up and really um, make this your best year and make this your best life, you have to start realizing that you have to create massive, massive value. And that doesn't just come from, you know, just, just doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You have to start tapping into that superpower because like the companies like that have made me the most money in life have all been because I had a stupid idea and I just acted on it. Right. Like building an app, like who would think just a little idea, spending money on myself, spending a couple thousand dollars, building an app, making so much, you know, money and freedom and, and all the things good that came out of that is, is just from these ideas. And it's like people underestimate the power of imagination. And it's, it's like, it blows my mind that people just don't believe in themselves to like realize curiosity is like the second biggest superpower I tell people because, you know, people, the only reason we have remote control, somebody got lazy enough and they didn't want to go and, you know, physically manually change the channels on a TV. And so it's like everything people get lazy about drive leads to curiosity. And then you'll start asking better questions of why can't I do this better? And I'll lead to a better idea and it leads to a completely different outcome. And so you have to start tapping into these superpowers. And then the third thing in terms of actually like making money is once you figure out, okay, the vehicle that I can do it, that's when the execution of hard work happens. But it happens in that order of having the right state of mind, you know, telling yourself the right story, creating a compelling future. And then it's the final thing is the strategy and execution. Because, you know, I can tell you like 10 different ways of strategy right now to make money, but nobody's going to act on it. If I told you, okay, you know what? If you have $100,000 right now, go invest in this thing and uh, you know, wait about three years and you'll make $500,000. That's a really good strategy. It'll work for 99% of the people, but you're not gonna act on it because um, you know, your decisions are for like today. You're not thinking long-term. You're not, you don't have the right mindset to invest. You're living in a place of fear. What if it goes wrong? You're just asking way too many of the wrong questions. And so you gotta start with the right mindset first. And, and then the strategy will follow. That's the last thing you need to worry about because unless you have that, you're never, never going to execute, you know? To me, the biggest thing was like, um, for my real estate thing, I used to, you know, help other people get really successful and I've seen them make a lot of money. I'm wondering, why am I not doing the same thing? It's because I was still living in that fear. Like, like I'm helping these people and it was safe for me because I get a piece of what they're doing. But it's like, why don't I become an owner myself? Why don't I start doing the same thing that I'm advising clients to do? Like, why am I not doing the same things? Am I being hypocritical? And then once I started acting on those things, it took me years to build that mindset of quit living from scarcity. Like, you know, you, you, you can only, like the secret of, of that is just once you learn to just let go and detach yourself and, and realize that money is an infinitely renewable resource and, and that everything is renewable in life and the only thing that's permanent is, is your emotions, your soul, your feelings then you start realizing that you can start looking at things logically and objectively and you don't put like emotion to money and live in a place of fear. You just say, look, if I lose money, I'll make it again. I'll figure it out because I have the brains within me to do it over and over and over again. And I'm not afraid to lose money anymore. I'm not afraid to make radical decisions because what's the worst that can happen? We live in 2022 where, you know, worst case, I'll go on food stamps. Like worst case, like what's the, I'll never starve to death. Like I, it just won't happen, you know? So don't live in a place of fear anymore. I think that's what you got to do to level up this year. I 
love that. It's so true. And I know that your book is helping so many people. Would you mind telling people what is the, what's the main thing that you hope people take away from your book? What is, what is that, that light bulb moment? Or what is that thing that you hope? Like if you could leave the world with one thing that everybody grasped or learned or did, what would that be? Absolutely. Well, you know, the reason I wrote this book was because when I came to LA, I had this problem initially and I would meet so many of my friends and they all have the same story that I'm broke. I can't do this and this, this, and this. And I go, you know, in life, when you go from point A to point B um, in your car, you have a GPS and it tells you where to go, but we never have a GPS for life. And the dream that really came in my head one day to write this book was I go, what if people realized we already have the superpowers within ourselves to do whatever we want. And all of these experts that tell you things are just experts at reaffirming limiting beliefs that you don't have what it takes, or, you know, you don't belong here, or that you have to do this for X number of years, and then you can live your dream, then you can do something. Once you earn this, then you can do that. But like, who are these people that are the so called experts telling you when and when you should do stuff? And I go, well, okay, so we all have these superpowers. What are these superpowers? So I, so I just went and I said, what if I just I've met all these people over the past decade in LA. And I said, what if I interviewed some of my heroes in my life that have been fortunate to become my friends? What if I could sit with them, ask them their stories about what made them successful and put that into a book? And I go, this is what it's about. And each of them told me one of their superpowers and I just made every chapter a superpower of a hero of mine. So each one was like talking about curiosity. There's a chapter called curiosity, creativity, imagination, you know, like persistence, um, you know, and we talk about wealth in a different way because, um, like wealth is, is really about um, making money your slave and not becoming a slave to money because a lot of like, you know, when I talk to this one billionaire, it's kind of like he optimized his whole life just to make money and he lives with massive regret. Uh, not, not that he made a lot of money, but the fact that he gave up so much and he goes, I'd have rather been happy with $200 million and had other things in my life where I should have not neglected my health so much and optimized for the other things in my life and that was the whole point of money and so people get so jaded so I want them to have the right mindset because everybody you know what if you do actually achieve all the success that you want it's also about learning to have the right mindset to you know be able to contribute and be a functioning member of society and and being able to realize what's important like the relationships the friends the people that you serve and and the reason that you make money is money is just a bigger tool it's a bigger hammer in your war chest to do cool stuff with and so it's about having the right mindset. So I think it just, I wrote it to reach all people, whether you're starting out or you're super successful, having the right psychology in place. And that's what I hope they take away is that we all have this inner genius in us and we're all geniuses at something in life. And, and if you start tapping into that, you'll wake up every day more confident, more happy, more relaxed, and just know that it's all going to work out. And I, I just hope like people read the book and that one person that just goes, I wanted to commit suicide today goes, you know, I read your book and it saved my life. And I think that's, that'll be the biggest thing, you know, if, if somebody could take that away. I love that. And I know that you're out there helping so many people with your books and your movies. You're, you're a phenomenal producer and entrepreneur investor, all of the things that you are up to. And can you tell people how they can buy your book, how they can get in touch with you on social media? If there's anything that you are promoting um, to the world, to, to help the world, uh, would love to hear about it. Yeah, in fact, uh, my book is on Amazon. It's called How to Manifest Anything, Unlock Your Superpower and Live Your Best Life. But if you just follow me on Natish Cannon 1 on Instagram or Natish Cannon on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, um, I'll give anybody that just mentions this podcast a free copy of the book. So I'll totally give anybody that wants it a free copy. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much. What a inspiring, insightful, and impactful interview. It was so great. And I am so honored to know you and uh, be sharing these amazing tools and mindset and skills so that people can go out there and crush it and live a badass life. Because guys, I don't know who needed to hear this, but you have something inside of you that's great. 
You have something inside of you that's great. The world is waiting for your gifts. The world is waiting for your superpower. And the more you live below your potential, the more you hide your gifts from the world, the more you silence your superpowers, the worse off the world will be. The world wants to experience your gifts. The world wants to get to know you. The world wants to benefit from your skill set. And when you don't work on yourself every single day, when you don't work on building your business so you can go out there and help people, you are doing the world a massive disservice. And so I hope this has inspired you to step out of fear, to step out of excuses, excuses, and to step into your power so you can go out there and change the freaking world. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, check out um, the description. We'll have his social media handles, where you can buy his book, all of that fun stuff. Thank you for coming. And we will see you on the next episode of the Vitamin B Show. Bye, guys.